thank you again, everybody, for uh, for joining us today. Um, we're trying to do a bit more of these. Uh, obviously, with no hockey, we have some more time on our hands. So, um, but I think they've actually been well received, which is good. And I think for for anybody here too, if you have any feedback on something that you want to see or maybe a different date or a different time, feel free to shoot me an email and uh, we can get that set up as well too. Because again, just want to make sure we're um, putting some good stuff out there. But uh, again, just when the presentation comes, just ask that everybody mute. I've recorded this one today too, so we can uh, post this after um, as well. So I think there'll be some good information for, for everybody here today too. Um, yeah, so, so today's topic is developing effective puck handling habits. And uh, we have one of my best friends here today, Stephen Zip. Um, I've done a lot of skill work with Stephen and seen the stuff that he does, particularly with puck handling, and it's, it's excellent. And I think the best part about uh, today's presentation that's really transferable from novice to pro, and I think he'll go over a lot of that, just the similarities we see and the key concepts and things that we, we pick out, they're really transferable and relatable from novice all the way up to the highest level. So, uh, Stephen, obviously from Edmonton, he grew up playing at uh, CAC, um, played at McEwen after that. Um, and he's, he's had a really amazing coaching career so far for, for his age and for what he's been able to accomplish. He's coached at uh, McEwen, uh, University of Alberta, um, Spruce Grove, he's doing some time there now, uh, Swift Current with, as a scout. Uh, and working with Kamloops now as a scout, and he's had the chance to win some championships too. But I think with him and any team that he's been on, he's got the chance to be a, a skills coach, and he's going to talk about a little bit more about that. And um, I will turn it over to you, Stephen. And then again, to you, if anybody has any questions, if you could fire them into the group chat, and I'll do my best to kind of manage those, um, and then we can go from there. But I think the majority of the questions that you guys um, had are... Uh, are uh, within the presentation. So I'll leave it to you, Stephen, give a little bit of intro and take it away. Thanks again for coming. No problem. No problem. Well, again, guys, uh, thank you for having me so much. I know when Joel and I first kind of got connected on this and, and he reached out to me, I was uh, pretty humbled and honored to have the opportunity to just to speak to you guys today. Um, kind of like the overview here, what I have is I have a big presentation for you guys followed with some, uh, some video. Um, then I'm going to kind of, I'm in my school portable here. So I'm going to do a lot of, um, uh, demonstrations again for you guys as well. Um, I just ask, yeah, please, please get out of your comfort zone. I'm going to give you everything I got for an hour. Um, I'm going to, this is a real passion of mine and I love working with, you know, with players of all ages. And I've been fortunate enough to work with players that we watch on TV and, and players that uh, are just uh, learning the game. So, um, you know, to have the opportunity to share my knowledge with you guys really means a lot. And I'm really excited to get going here. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen here now. Bear with me here while I uh, while I work on this. Should work now. Steven. Yeah, here we go. Sure. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, guys. So again, theme uh, theme for today is developing effective puck handling habits. Um, all right, here we go. So a bit about uh, tonight's agenda. So. I'll go through a bit of an intro about myself. I'll give you guys some background on my personal bio, where I've coached, uh, some of the players I've worked with. Uh, then we're going to look at uh, five puck handling habits, and we're going to break those down. So these five habits are, are habits that, 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 I, that I work with uh, players of all ages. Uh, we're also going to look at some video, and we're going to make a connection between the, between the two as well. Uh, we'll then go into two, two components that, that I'm big on if, if I've ever worked with any of your athletes or or been out to your practices, but hand-eye and creativity, I don't think, I think they're two concepts that, uh, you know, us as coaches don't, don't focus on, on enough. And uh, it's something that we can always include more in our practice plans. Uh, we're, I have a bunch of drills for you guys. I'm going to make sure it gets sent out to you. Uh, I'm going to demo those drills here. I'll talk again about um, some of the habits. I'll give you demonstrations. Um, and then I'll talk a bit about how all these skills transfer to different avenues within our game. And how uh, you know have using these skills effectively bleed into you know, our shooting, our passing, our edge work, our skating, uh, you know, really in an in an effort to create a, that uh, that full on uh, complete player. And then lastly, uh, we'll go go through uh, Q and A. Um, so I guess I guess again, my my big ask, guys, is that uh, again, please get out of your comfort zone, ask as many questions as you guys can within the group chat there, and um, and then I'll stay on here as long as I can. Uh, and in, in hopes that I can answer all of them. 
All right, so just shifting gears a bit, I want you guys to be as comfortable as you can with me as, uh, as I have you here for an hour. So uh, just a bit of a, a bit of an introduction uh, on myself. So um, I grew up in the West End of Edmonton, uh, played for CAC my, my entire life, played, uh, played junior uh, in the AJ, a bit in the BC, as well as in the North American League. And I ended up playing at, uh, at McEwen University where I, uh, I played there for four years. And and I actually got the opportunity to coach with uh, my good friend, Bram Steven in my, in my last year there, in my fifth year, last year of eligibility, where we were lucky enough to, to win a, win a championship in the ACAC. Um, from there, I went on to the, to the U of A uh, and I joined the, the Golden Bears program. And I worked with, you know, some amazing, amazing individuals there and in, in Serge, Serge uh, Lejoie, Dan Cordick and Umberto Fiorillo. And, and those guys are, are, you know, three of my best friends to this day. And, uh, and again, we were lucky enough to uh, to win a, a national championship uh, in Fredericton, uh, New Brunswick, as well, which is a really amazing amazing feat for me. I, I, that's uh, something that I hold dearly. Uh, throughout this time, I was also scouting. I was a young young scout within the Western Hockey League, and then I actually joined the Swift Current Broncos on their uh, WHL championship run as an assistant coach uh, when I was finished at the U of A, and I was able to go to the Memorial Cup. Um, we're again lucky enough to win a WHL championship there. Uh, currently, um, I am a regional scout with the Kamloops Blazers, um, working with some amazing people in that organization and Matt Bardsley, Robbie Sandland, Kevin Hopped, um, some, again, some really lucky and fortunate to be, to be involved with that organization. And then lastly, uh, I'm working with Spruce Grove right now, kind of who well, I was until, until the, the shutdown, again, back with Bram Steven there, which is really, really cool to kind of have that, uh, experience in all, all three different leagues. Uh, and as, as far as my skills, skills coach goes, um, I, I'm very involved with 200 hockey and, uh, the owner Wade Burt, Wade's a very good friend of mine. So I've been fortunate enough to, to grow alongside him, uh, and honing our skills, uh, shifting gears. I'm also a teacher. I'm a second year teacher at uh, St. Francis Xavier high school, uh, where I'm, you know, I'm very, very grateful to, to be part of the FX high performance hockey program there. And I'll touch a bit about that as well, uh, throughout the presentation. All right, so five puck handling habits that uh, that I'm very fortunate enough to to work with and kind of create uh, this list. You know, you know, working with so many different different players throughout my time as a, as a skills coach. Uh, before we kind of dive into all of them and and really break each each habit down, guys, I, I really want to stress that you know these habits are so crucial for for in players that are as young as novice. Right? It's the exact same stuff that I'll teach with a novice player, an Adam player, or a PB player, right up to a guy, you know, in his fifth year in the NHL, or a guy going to Europe, or a guy playing in the NCAA. Right? Obviously, the the, the level of difficulty, uh, you know, increases as you get older. But again, these five five habit, habits can be included at any level uh, within our within our practices. Um, again, just uh, before we get into it, uh, I think. You know, I'll, I'll talk a bit about some 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 coaching strategies and, and some coaching tips when focusing on skills coaching. But hold your players accountable, and I'll I'll get into that when we when we look at the sample drills. But you know, at the end of the day, players they trust us, they wanna they wanna work with us, and they wanna be coached, right? So if we hold them accountable, especially you know looking at a puck handling focus, um, you know, and really focusing on these habits, they're gonna get better, right? Every single time they're on the ice. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, let's get into it here. So how it's going to work, guys? I'm going to walk you through uh, five slides. You know, breaking down these habits. Uh, we're going to watch a quick video I have attached with each habit. We'll watch the video. I'll talk. All right, I'll I'll teach you through the habit, uh, and then we'll get back and uh, watch the video a few times again. Okay, and then really really analyze. You know what 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 the players are doing. All right, so the video is going to start playing as soon as I switch gears here uh, to the next slide. Okay, so we have Pat, Patty Kane here, just warming up uh, in warm up. You know, pretty amazing the stuff he, you know, he's able to do with the puck. Um, and again, awesome. So, first, first habit that we're going to focus on tonight is is my hand positioning and and what uh, the role of each hand is. So obviously two hands on my stick, right? Uh, my my top hand, guys, is so crucial. It is responsible for all of my movements. Uh, from my blade and all my movement of my hands. Okay, um, it needs to be. It needs to re remain really tight on the knob of my stick, 
And it's so important because it dictates what I do with the puck. So if I want to handle the puck in my forehand, my, my, my top hand has to twitch. Same thing on my backhand. All right. And ultimately, we're looking to control the puck on both sides of my blade, you know, as, con as controlled and as fast twitched as possible. So my top hand uh, needs to be active. Uh, again, guys, just before I get going here, I, I really encourage you guys to take notes. Uh, like I said, I, I'll do whatever I can to share as much information as, you, as I can with you. Uh, but please, please uh, take notes so you guys can you guys can implement this into your teams or with your with your uh, sons or daughters or uh, players that, that you work with. All right. So sec second component here would be my bottom hand. Now, you know, a bit of a key is, you know, the, as, as much as all these are, are, are very important, if I want to handle a puck properly, um, I need to have an active, a loose bottom hand. Right? I like to refer to this one as my steering wheel or my guide. All right. It's the key uh, for range of motion around my body and it must be loose, right? So we're just gonna watch this clip again, right? And I want you to watch how uh, Patrick Kane, how he pulls and pushes the puck in and, in and away from his body, okay? Using a nice and loose bottom hand, uh, which allows him to shift his weight from inside to outside, from his inside leg to his, to his uh, outside or top hand leg as well. So I'll play the video again for you guys a couple of times. And I really want you to focus on his top hand, okay? And his bottom hand as well. So you see his top hand really moving, right? That's creating all the motion, right? And his bottom hand's real loose on his stick. You see it changed. There it is. Pull, push, pull, push. Okay, we'll watch it again, guys. And we'll just, again, watch that top hand. Watch his bottom hand shifting up and along his shafts. And then when he pulls, push and pulls that, that puck in and away from his body, there's that weight transfer. All right. Okay, so first one, hand positioning and rolls. All right, moving on here, uh, we're gonna look at having my hands away from my body. So we'll just watch a quick clip here of Nathan McKinnon. All right, so as you can see, I'll play it again, it's a, it's a shorter clip. You can see how his top hand is really off his hip. Right, he really pushes, punch. I like to say punch. He punches his knuckles away from his body. So he has a nice range of motion around his body. So when my hands are away, away from my body, it allows me to cut, handle that puck at different ranges on my forehand, in front of my, in front of my, my hips, and on my backhand side. Um, far too often when I, when I work with players initially, I, I see them jamming themselves. So what happens is when they, when they receive a puck, when they're handling a puck, their hands are right tight to their hip or inside on their, kind of on their, uh, on their hips. And, you know, my, my first correction is punch those hands out, get them away from your body. Now I'll talk a bit about this later, but we're going to see how important this is uh, whenever I, I, I transfer my weight. And again, transferring my weight is, is so crucial for me guys, because it's, it's in every part of my game. So if I'm passing with my partner, I'm constantly transferring my weight from my inside leg to my outside leg. And I can't do that without my, with, with my hands in tight, I have to punch them out. Same thing with shooting, right? When I'm, when I'm shooting off my inside leg or my outside leg, I'm constantly shifting and transferring my weight, um, all due, due to me having my hands away from my body. All right, so we'll, we'll watch this clip again here of, of, uh, of Mr. McKinnon here. I really, again, really focus on, on his hands and where, and where they are. All right, so he's nice and low, hands are away from his body. So crucial. All right, I think la last point I'll make on this, guys, is you know every time I have my hands away from my body, I'm always allowing for momentum to come into my stance. So when I allow for that weight transfer, now I'm now I'm creating an element of uh, deception. So now if I'm a defender, I don't know whether I'm going to pass or I'm going to shoot. Or if I, if there's a goalie in front of me, he doesn't know whether I'm going to pass or release. Right? Just just by simply having my hands away from my body. All right, next one. So we'll watch a little clip here of, uh, of Dallin off, uh, off Buffalo. So again, one of the more crucial points that I, that I really stress whenever I'm working with a player or, or a group of players is, is, and that is a power or balance stance. And then again, that element of weight transfer, it's contagious, that weight transfer, it bleeds into every part of my game. Okay, so we'll quick, it's a short clip, so we'll watch it again here. But I want you to watch how he Rasmus, you know, tra transitions side to side, 
Okay, and he stays at one level the entire time. So his weight's inside to outside leg, All right? Just by simply, again, his hands are, are, are away from his body, which allows weight to, his weight to transfer from inside to outside leg as well. Okay, so, so some, some keys on, on how to, how to um, you know, focus on this is that my knees must stay over top of my toes. Right. So if I, if I, if I were to stand up and look over on my toes and if I were to bend my knees, my knees are directly over top of my toes. And I can tell that through the flex of my ankles, right? Cause I want to play the game fast. I want to play the game on my toes. Uh, I can't do that if my knees aren't over my toes and if my ankles aren't flexed. Right. Um, next point is I, I really want to focus on alignment. All right. So I want alignment between my shoulders. So my shoulders should be square, right? I have nice square hips and my ankles are flexed and I have alignment, shoulder, hip, ankle, All right? This ensures that uh, my shoulders and upper body are nice and square. And again, that allows me to have a vision around the ice. Second, second part to this. So once I've, I've established that, that, that power or balance stance, guys, um, I need to stay in that. And that is something that, again, we need to be, to be explained to our, our, our athletes daily, is that as soon as I rise out of this stance, guys, I lose all my weight transfer, I lose my power, and I lose my balance. So when I'm doing that, when I'm bobbing up and down and losing that, that, uh, that stance, I'm being inefficient, right? That's when I'll get knocked off the puck. That's when I'm easy, easy to catch. And that's when I'm losing momentum, losing power, and losing speed. All right, so again, we'll watch this clip a few more times, guys. I really want you to focus on on uh on Dallin and how he shifts just by you know shifting his weight from inside to outside leg okay part and part of that's due to his due, due to his edge work but I want you to see how level his shoulders are and how he stays in that nice balanced stance the in, the entire time so he's nice and low and he's just shifting right his eyes are up his shoulders are nice and square one more time here shift hands are away shift right Pretty impressive for this. This clip was when he was uh, was an 18 year old. So awesome. Okay, so the next the, the next one, guys, we're gonna move on to uh, the fourth fourth habit that I that I've that I have for you, and that's uh, and that's a nice high elbow. So um, before I play the clip here, this is uh, you know a concept that I've I've learned from from a, a few uh, you know really really impressive people within the hockey world, and it's a concept that uh, is so simple but allows me to handle a puck so smoothly and so efficiently. Um, and it, it's, uh, it's something that, again, really, really easy for us to teach kids uh, at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a young level. So we'll watch the clip here. I want you to focus on, again, his hands being away from his body, top hand is off his hip, and that, and that height of his elbow. And I'll talk a bit about, about why that's important here. So see his elbow's nice and high, his hands are away from his body. Okay, that bottom hand's gripping and re-gripping nice and loose. And again, all that momentum's from his top hand. One more time here. Awesome. Okay, so why this is important, guys, is that every time my blade is nice and flat on the ice, all right, and I have as much blade nice and flat, my puck is going to stay flat the entire time so as soon as i start playing the game where my elbow is moving up and down and my blade isn't fully contacting the ice that puck is going to bobble right and that's really important when i get to the higher levels when that puck is is passed a lot harder so when i'm re receiving a pass if i have a, only a portion of my blade on the ice that puck's going to bobble right well now i'm being inefficient because now i have to settle that puck down and now i'm focusing on my puck placement opposed to what's around me Right. And again, it's a bit of a combination with the lie of my blade. So we'll watch it again before I move on to the next talking points. But I want you to focus on his blade. Okay. And I want you to see how his elbow being nice and high allows his blade to stay nice and flat here. Right. So that puck's nice and flat the entire time. And again, his blade is, is contacting the ice with as much blade as possible. One more quick time here. Uh, sorry, guys. Again, blade, blade's flat here. It's a really good example there. And again, guys, it's, it's something that that is so easy for us just to just to monitor. You know, we'll look at our look at our kids and 
and look at how they're handling a puck. If they're really struggling with, with a bobbling puck, we'll look at their elbow, right? How much of the blade is actually contacting the ice, right? Second point that, that is uh, really important about this is that having a nice high elbow allows my upper body to stay nice and square and level. Okay, and that bleeds into the next co uh, concept that I'll talk about. And again, when my shoulders are nice and square, but now I, I can see what's going on around me. And then I can, again, remain in that nice, balanced and powerful stance. Oh, did I, I think I caught, touched on everything there. And again, guys, just contact that puck with as much uh, blade as possible. Be as efficient as possible. And that'll prevent that puck from jumping. All right. So next, next clip that again, that uh, again, I'm really, really, uh, I stress a lot and I'm really high on. And that uh, is, is vision. And, uh, and a term that I, I call scanning the ice. Well, again, this is a really good clip of Giroux, uh, just working on his hands and working on his vision. Um, guys, I'll, I'll be honest, at the next level, you know, you know we need to, to be able to have the ability to process the game around me. Um, and I need to be aware of what's around me. Um, and it's, it's very simple. I, I, I go out to so many practices and I work with, with so many players and I always hear the term head, head, up, head up or heads up or eyes up. And, and I've kind of, I remember kind of thinking to myself, well, okay, we'll have my head up. Yeah. You know, that's, it's, it's pretty simple. I've heard that since, since Adam, but, but what's next, you know, how can I take that concept to the next level? Uh, and that's, and that's by scanning the ice, right? Simply by, by rotating my, my chin around my body. Now I'm giving myself more opportunity to see what's happening around me. Right. So uh, if I'm, if I'm attacking in the offensive zone, and my head's down. Well, now I'm limiting to myself uh, to, to, the, to the few options that, that, that I have, right? By simply being comfortable by scanning the ice and, and being comfortable handling a puck, looking up, not only, but also looking around my body, I can process, okay, where are my defenders, right? Where's my support? Where's the free ice? Where am I going to move a puck next? Where am I going to, where do I need to place this puck, right? Because where's my pressure coming? All right. And again, and, that, and that's just, um, you know, talking about the ability to process what's going on around me. Uh, and just by, it's a, again, a simple concept of just by, by rotating my neck, my chin, just around my body, right. Handling that puck, but being comfortable around what, what's going on around me. Uh, another concept that's really important guys is, is if I'm, again, I need to be comfortable seeing the ice on both sides of my body, especially on the opposite side of where I'm handling a puck. And again, another really, really minor details. If I'm a lefty and I'm, again, I'll show this when I go into my demos here, but if I'm handling a puck on my, in my, on my strong side, I'm going to be most comfortable looking to my strong side, right? If I'm on, on my left-hand side, I'm looking to my left-hand side. The progression to that is I want to know what's coming on my right-hand side, on my off side, right? So I can handle my left side, but also be aware of my, over my right shoulder. All right. So again, something that's, uh, I have it in the, in the, in the practice plan, I'll go over with you guys, but again, something so simple, you know, change that, that phrase. Yeah. Have my head up. Okay. That's, that's step one. Now scan the ice. Right. And that just allows our players to increase their playmaking and ultimately creativity, which, uh, which I'm big on. So we'll watch this, this, uh, this clip again. I think it's a great clip. It's filmed with a bit of a GoPro. So you see how his eyes are up and, and, uh, he's focused on what's ahead of him. Right. And then again, hands are away from his body. There's that weight shift. Right. And again, it's all being dictated by his, by his, by his top hand. All right. Okay. So, so shifting gears here, um, I want to talk a bit about, about hand eye. Um, you know, for those of you that, that I've worked with, you know, hopefully worked with your, with your athletes or, or been out you, you see me uh, talk about hand eye. And, and, and again, it's something that in my mind, uh, is, is totally underdeveloped with, with our, with our athletes say, and something that is never focused on. Uh, and I'll give you some strategies of how to, of how to include this in your practice, but we'll watch a little clip of, uh, of Ryan O'Reilly here. And this is, I think we should have all seen this in the playoffs a few years ago, but, uh, just, just his part of his, uh, you know, pregame routine. All right. So he's obviously prepping for a game. Right, just warming up his hand eye. It's about an 18 second clip where he, or he even catches that ball, but he he goes for about 18, 20 seconds. So, uh, you know, the whole purpose of this is I wanted to find two clips for you guys of one where off the ice, right, which would definitely relate to you know the kind of situation we're in now, and then how it translates to to helping us on the ice for our, our athletes. So, 
Um, I always, I always tell players when, when I, when I work with them is, you know, what are you doing, you know, for your hand eye off the ice? You know, what do you do before a game? Do you stick candle? Do you, do you juggle a ball? Right. And, and obviously you have one of the best players in the world using this within his warm up. And, and the whole point of, of this guys is, is it's so crucial because it, it leads into, into this next clip, right? We probably saw this clip of Pavelski, one of the best in the game to, in this area, but where he's just touching pucks. All right. So by simply, you know, incorporating, you know, a, a good, a good pregame warmup and focusing on my hand eye, I'm increasing my ability to, to, to score and create offense, right? Especially uh, in areas that, that are tough to get to. And you see again, by watching the playoffs and, and close checking games of how many goals are scored based off this, right? Especially last night against the Oilers, Simmons had one. Next, next slide here, guys, is just is creativity. And I, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on this is, and this is, uh, is something that's, uh, that is really big for me. Um, I think, and I think this gets kind of, you know, we're, we're pretty harsh on players when they, when they show creativity. Um, yes, there's an absolute time and a place, you know, I think as coaches, you know, we can all agree on there's a time and a place for a guy to go through his legs or, or try the, you know, the, uh, the Crosby or the Michigan or the, the, the move behind the net that we, uh, we see so often. But at the end of the day, we want our kids to have fun, right? And, and we want them to, to try stuff like this. And, and uh, I'll show you three clips of, of, of now pro players, but I want you to watch, you know, just what they try and warm up and how much fun they have and, and uh, how they allow themselves just to, just to have some fun with the puck and be creative in their, in their processing and thinking. So this is uh, Trevor Zegras just in his warm up this year uh, with the American World Junior Team. Right, and again, like I want you to think back to your practices and how many times you see kids playing this, right? Like encourage it, right? Encourage it in line, encourage it before practice, you know, create that element of fun. And obviously pretty amazing moves yeah, that, that he's doing. Um, second one, again, Crosby, he does this in every single one of his warmups, right? Uh, here you go. He's just picking pucks up off his feet, you know, using both edges, right? Both blade, both parts of his blade. I'll play it again here. But again, how many times in the game do we, do we see players get a, a get a, get a, a, a bass on their feet, right? We've all heard the, the cliche phrase, you know, there's never a bad pass to a good player. Well, here's a perfect example of it, right? Here's why, why it's never a bad pass. And then again, the last one is just, is just uh, Andrew Ghetto off Colorado, just having some fun. You know, just trying new things. I know, I'll play it again here. Awesome. So again, just a big, a big talking point for me there, guys. Just uh, again, really focus on not, not, not only creativity, but encourage that, right? Allow that, that fun. So an example I always do is, you know, if I have a six, a six uh, progression teaching point where I'm teaching six different skills for puck handling in a practice, my seventh one or my eighth one is always hand-eye. Right. And then I add an element of creativity. Right. So, again, something that, that we can all add into our practices and start to brainstorm and think of how we're, how we're going to do that once we get back on the ice here. All right. So I want to again, sorry, guys, I'm, I'm going I'm to get to the demos in a bit here, but I want to show you uh, just a bit of a skill habit transfer and how these various concepts and habits uh, that I referred to, uh, how they bleed into the rest of our game and uh, and, and where we're going to see them. Right. So again, so having my hands away from my body and a nice loose bottom hand will allow me to receive passes from both sides of my body and it will allow me to, to, to shift my weight into a shot release uh, into another pass or into puck protection. Right. By allowing myself to receive a puck and use that momentum when now I'm giving myself op self options. And uh, again, it's so important in so many different parts of my game. That power and balance stance. Right. I think skating coaches can agree that it's so evident in, in my stride, right? Because I want to keep all my power in my stride and I want to keep my edge work sharp. Uh, and eventually it just comes down to my, again, there's that word weight, that, that uh, phrase, sorry, uh, weight transfer, right? And again, I talked about uh, shooting release, how that weight transfer plays into that and then puck protection again. Uh, vision and scanning the ice. So again, with, when I'm able to process the game around me, I'm able to make more plays. Right. I'm able to move that puck quicker. I'm able to see where my pressure is, where my support is, see where new ice is. And again, I'm working on my overall IQ. 
right? Second thing, when I'm in an area to, to put a puck on net, right? I want to trust my hands, have confidence in my hands so that when I can receive that puck, now I know exactly where that goal is, you know, where that shooting lane is, right? And then the last thing, again, hand-eye is, is, so, is so important, right? You know, for forwards in front of the net, deflecting pucks or redirect pucks. We see so many power plays in the NHL right now that are that are all based on, the, on that high tip in the slot or, you know, an east-west play to a backdoor deflection, right? Uh, for D-men, you know, knocking down a dump in, right? Or forwards when you're back checking and there's a puck put in the air across you, you got to bat it down. So things like that, right? That, uh, again, are such little details, guys, but are so important because they make such big differences uh, in building that complete player as well all right so before i get into the drills here guys um i want to talk to you a bit about about designing drills and kind of walk you through how i approach a skill session um or a practice as well um so again it doesn't matter guys what drill i i i i do um i could go on instagram and find a drill or i could create a drill you know the night before by myself or, you know, within the drills I'm going to give you today, but all five of those habits, again, need to be present in every single drill, puck handling drill that I, you know, I'm, I'm implementing or I'm, I'm, I'm using. So I'll kind of walk you, I'll walk you backwards how I, how I get to that point. So whenever I sit down upon a session, I always have, uh, have that, that kind of whole design outlook in my mind. So I always think, oh, you know, what am I trying to accomplish? Right. So by the end of the end of the session, I want to have a drill, a, a capstone drill that is, you know, is, is allowing them to use uh, a loose bottom hand. Right. And stick handle around their body. Right. Or create motion with my top hand. So that's kind of the, 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 the things I'll think about at the very end of my of my skate. And then I'll walk myself back there and I'll say, OK, well, well what parts do I need to focus on, need to include throughout the throughout the skate? And how am I going to get there, right? Because when I when I talk about skill blending, when I get to that that final combination drill, right? I want to combine as many individual skills into that drill as I can, right? Because when I do that, when now I'm allowing that player to work on all five of those habits in one drill, right? And then I'm going to be I hold them accountable and I'm going to point them out, right? Hey, we just worked on that at the beginning of the skate. You need to stay in that low bottom stance. Your hands have to stay away from your body. Again, bottom hand can be can be looser, things like that. So that kind of leads us to a, to a concept called skill isolation. So again, as as coaches, we need to build those relationships with my you know each of my unique individual players and, and find out you know what is their weakest skill part, right? I need to isolate that and then fix it. So if if Johnny's going throughout the drill, hey Johnny, you know every single time you know you go to your backhand, your your top hand comes in on your hip. Punch that top hand out, but which will allow you to handle easier on your backhand, which again leads into puck protection, right? As you see Makar here doing, right? And then again, every player will be different. So it's our job as coaches, guys, to isolate those individual skills, find out their strongest and encourage it, right? What's their strongest skill set? Encourage it in puck handling. What's their weakest? And then fix it, okay? Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in getting as many reps as possible. So I always like to start stationary where my, my, my focus is individual skill isolation with as many reps as I can. And then I get them moving, right? So I kind of build their confidence. So I, I give them as many reps as I can individually. And then I build them into, Hey, well now we're going to do it moving up and down the ice or moving along the lines, right? Or just moving, you know, within a six foot area practicing it. And that's really important guys, you know, allow, again, I allow them to have success, start them, Start them small, start them stationary, give them lots of reps, right? And then get them moving, all right? Which will, again, of course, uh, increase the difficulty. All right, here. So as you can see in the screen here, I kind of, before I, you know, turn, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll, I'll walk you through all these. Um, I wanted to give you guys, you know, some four, four individual puck handling sequences that we can do uh, individually as an entire group before practice. Maybe you're gonna give the goalies to your assistant coaches, they're gonna warm them up. And we're gonna do some individual puck handling. So I'll kind of walk you through um, four individual skills here. I'll talk about them, give you variations, 
I'll teach you how to explain them. So please take notes. And then again, I'll make sure Joel sends, uh, sends the, these, uh, these practice plans out and that PowerPoint out for you guys. So you guys can reference back and forth. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of do my best here guys just to get set up and hopefully I'm, I'm loud enough and uh, you guys can see me. So, um, you can see me. So let's see if I can pull this down a bit. For, uh, for those that are on, you can, um... You can change to have the speaker view. Yeah. And then is that, is that, like, Joel, just, just yell at me when you can see. I'm just going to kind of, uh, can you guys see me there? Is that good enough, Joel? Yeah, you're great okay, there. So, That's so guys, so for the first one, I always like to work in, work in figure eights. I'll see if I can kind of stand back here. You guys can hear me, but I really like to, to work on figure eights. So I'm going to walk you through kind of the, 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 the five habits. So the first one again is my, is my hands. So again, I'm going to pop my hands away from my body. So I always have movement around. So my, my top hand is off my hip. And now this will allow me to handle comfortably here. And again, if I'm having pressure here, that pucks outside my body. So for those of you that are, that are, that, that are on the call, that are, that are athletes or have kids that are, that are watching, again, guys, I encourage you to go grab your gloves, grab your, grab your stick, and just kind of walk through this with me, right? And just, and just get some reps so that um, you guys can feel comfortable when you implement this. So, Again, first, you know, first habit, hands away from my body. Okay, again, I can handle my backhand, which is always really tough because players want to bring their hands in here. I can handle in front of me, and there's my high elbow, and then I can handle on my uh, on my forehand side, nice and easy as well. Okay, again, top hand needs to stay nice and nice and tight here, and this creates all my motion. So when I'm handling this puck, guys, all my motion comes from my top hand. So a really good way to isolate this is to just stick camera with one hand, right? Get them into their loaded stance, pop their chest up and off their hip. Well, now I'm just gonna handle and force them to really rely on that top hand. So all their movement, now it's isolated. Now there's my work. Now I'm gonna blend the skill, I'll bring my top, my, my bottom hand down. And now that's just my guy. So one of the, you know, a really good tool that, that I've, I've kind of used here is is, uh, Wade Bird here at 200 Hockey has, has, has you know, come up with the slick stick. It's a really good tool that he, that he um, has introduced here recently. And again, it just really allows us to focus on that bottom hand. So with my top hand doing all my work, my bottom hand can stay nice and loose. I can pull that puck in. And it's just a really good tool for me to, to, to focus and isolate that, that bottom hand, hand moving. All right, so again, that stance. So I wanna, I wanna kind of give you guys a demo so hopefully you guys can see my stance here. So a uh, common mistake is kids will have their, their feet too in tight and then, then they'll, still, they'll sit here and this is where I get knocked off puck. So rule of thumb is feet shoulder width apart. Okay, I want my feet to be on my, I want my, my, my weight to be on my, on my toes. So my knees are covering my toes, I'm nice and loaded. My shoulders are square and I'm staying in this position. Uh, they're going to have trouble with this because this, this, this is tough, right? I need, I need to play the game at this level. But as soon as I rise up, my next movement needs to go back down to here. So as an efficient hockey player, I'm always playing the game at this level. You know, and a great example, guys, is watch, watch Sidney Crosby, right? Watch uh, Yamamoto, you know, stronger guys that, uh, that really rely on staying in that stance and are so hard to handle. Okay. And then just weight transfer. So when I'm, when I'm in this nice loaded stance, it allows me to transfer from my inside leg to my top hand leg nice and easy, right? And you can see that, that weight transfer. And I mean, I'll talk about that a bit, uh, a bit as we go. So I'm just gonna see if I can fix the camera here, guys. I'm just gonna show you the last habit here. So when I'm talking about scanning the ice, so if I'm, if I'm handling the puck, right? I need to be comfortable, hey, I always, again, there's that turn eyes up. So my eyes are up. That's totally good. Guys handling the puck here. We're comfortable here. Well, let's take it to the next level where I'm handling here. I want to look this way and now I'm scanning. So now I'm looking at what's going on around me. Right? Common, common mistake is kids, when I, whenever I sit at scan the eggs, they always bring the puck to their forehand and here's their vision right here. Well, I want to take it to the the next level where now I'm looking over this shoulder. Okay, well, where's my where's my support? Where's my F3? Okay, demons coming here. I'm gonna cut this way. 
So by simply just keeping my nice, my shoulders nice and square and just rotating my chin around my body, I'm allowing myself to process so much more of the game that I was originally giving my, my, myself, right? And again, something that, uh, that we can work on with our athletes uh, at such a young age. So Joel, I'll just kind of have you give me a thumbs up. I'm just going to show the three, the three uh, sequences here. Yeah, you could, you okay, could there, so right? should be. First one, guys, I always like to work in triangles. So very simple, have, have your athletes grab four pucks, build a triangle. So first one, I can just isolate figure eights. So I can go figure eight here, figure eight at the top, figure eight on the side. So very simple, I can just rotate that puck around in a figure eight motion. Up top again, sorry, four's not too is the slide is easy and the work again around. And again, concepts is wherever this puck goes, my weight goes. So if I'm handling here, my weight's on this leg. There's that loose bottom hand, hand off my hip, and I'm transferring. Okay, and again, very simple. Not, another one that we can do here is just nice quick hands on my toes, okay, shifting my weight, hand off my hip, good high elbow, just right in front here. Then I can push up here into this angle or push up here. All right, make sense? From there, I can also just get rid of that fourth puck and I can handle this nice and quick here. And then on the whistle, coach's whistle, I can adjust to this puck. Whistle, adjust to this puck. Whistle, this puck. Uh, over and over. All right. So that's the first one. If you look on your, on that, uh, on the sheet, like, which I will send you. Um, second drill, again, is I can just grab a device. Okay, so very simple. You can just grab a device. And I can just have, again, reinforce that creativity aspect. So again, I can just work on pulling that puck in and out, that loose bottom hand, maybe start with one hand, pushing and pull, focusing on that weight transfer. Right, when I add that bottom hand, I can use my toe to bring that puck in, push that puck out, pull that toe back in, push it out. Or I can use my back hand. Right now I'm pulling on my back hand, pushing it out, pulling on my back hand. Okay. I can also just go underneath and focus on that nice loose bottom hand. Okay, common mistake on this one is I see kids pull and then they lift and then they put their stick down. Focus on them having them pull here. So I'm pulling, right? Pulling. Or I can just go nice, nice, nice and quick, touch, quick, quick, touch. Okay, so just reinforcing that creativity around that device. All right. <laughs> Hey, Steven, I know you, you're talking about the, the weight shifts with the puck. Yeah. I've seen you do some work as well where it's the opposite, right? And that's you're building your wall with puck protection where the weight's on one side and puck is on the other. Can you talk about that? I know you talk about that often too. Yeah, that's my next, that's, I, that's my next one here. All right. I got, I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay, so, so guys, this is probably uh, one of the more important ones. And again, I, I try to include it in all my skates. So, how I set it up is I have two pucks as my guide there. Now for this one, the puck is always going to be on my forehand side. So when I'm teaching this, in order to simplify it for the athletes, I always want the puck on my forehand side. So again, I always start part, part, and then I combine them. So I isolate each skill and then I blend them. So for the first one, I'm going to pop my hands out, my weights on my inside leg, Knee is over top of my toe and it's in line with my shoulder. I'll move back a bit, guys, so you can see a bit better. Okay, so when I'm nice and loaded, okay, I'm here. So there's my weight shift right here. So I'll, I'll really focus on punching my hands out, nice high elbow, and I'm handling on my inside leg. So I'll, I'll, I'll usually have them go through, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, you know, three or four reps. Okay, and then my next progression is now working on my top hand leg. So I like to call it, say it, call it my top hand. A lot of people call it their outside, but I like just to reference my top hand of my stick. That's directly in, in line with my leg. So again, puck stays on my forehand. Now my weight's gonna shift to my top hand leg. Chest is gonna stay up. There's my high elbow. And now I'm gonna handle here, right? And as Joel re referred to, there's my, so there's my puck protection, right? Once I add my vision, right now I'm going to be able to see what's going on, on around me. 
So there's my two isolate, isolated skills. Now, what I want to build to is now after about you know six reps uh, in total or three or four each, again, I'm going to start pucking my forehand inside leg, and now I'm going to rotate back to my top hand leg and then back here, always staying in this nice loaded stance. So what you'll probably see, guys, is when they're here, they'll rise up and then come down. Force them to keep their center of balance nice and low, shoulders across, and I'm transferring my weight. Joel, is that, is that kind of what you're yeah. referring to there? Yeah. That's perfect. I yeah. want you to forget. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so um, last one, fun one. So one that I kind of did this summer. Um, and again, guys, if you're stressing about not remembering these, I have these all written down in the practice plan as well for you guys. So simple, uh, just take three pucks. Okay. And again, I always want to ensure that I'm in that nice loaded stance. Hands are away from my body. And I'm going to replace each of these pucks, okay, with the puck before. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to pull this puck, pull this puck over, and I'm going to stop it. Pull over, stop. Pull over, stop. There's my, that, that action with my hands. Hands are away from my body. Now I'm relying and I'm focusing on handling that puck here. I see a lot of players do this in the game, right? Well, that to me just screams turnover, right? Get there, there goes my, my, my step. By having my bottom hand here, now I can still make a play or I can pop it or I can slide it back across. Okay, so now I'm here and I'm gonna bring this puck back, 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 and there's my weight transfer. Here, 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 here. Again, one that, that, that is so simple and again, it has so many concepts in it. Next one, again, I can just simply start here or I can handle here. Whistle goes, shift here, staying in that nice low stance, focusing on my top hand. Here, whistle goes, now I shift. Whistle, shift, whistle, shift, right? And then last one is again, I can use these two pucks as my figure eight sequence. So I can handle this puck here, pull this puck over, figure eight, set this puck up back here. Grab this puck, figure eight, set this puck up here. Switch, switch, set. All right. So just uh, guys, just four, four, four uh, individual skills that we can do um, before. But before practice, that uh, allows, again, heavy rep counts. And then, again, just but be really hard on those guys for um, focusing on those, on those habits. Ooh, a lot, of, a lot of talking. Your heart rate's up, Joel. Your calves look good. <laughs> yeah, my, my legs are so white. Probably blinding you guys. Okay, uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go back, and I'm going to show you guys um, the next, next portion here. Um, here we go. Where is it here? Okay, so again, whenever I, I'm doing I'm doing puck handling, guys. Um, station, 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 stations. Right, cut your numbers lower. Right, uh, allow them to have as many reps as they can. Okay, so it will, I'll kind of talk through station one. So uh, something that again that we can do. I showed it in this in this setup, guys, where I'm just using an end zone. Uh, I've used going across the blue line as well. Um, but I, what I really like about this is I can do four different stations all the way around the ice for 15 minutes and have the kids rotate through, which then guarantees me that they're going to work on individual skills for 15 minutes the entire time, right? Different drills, right? Different blends of skills. But again, where we're focusing on those on those five habits. So for the first state for uh, for the first station here, uh, just simple, you know, you, you have, you have two pucks, uh, set up and it's just simple figure eights, right? All the way, all the way through, right? Allowing them to focus on that top hand being nice and tight, creating that, that movement and that bottom hand being nice and loose. So one thing I'll caution you guys on is when they transfer from, from this first set of pucks to the next set of pucks, um, make sure they don't rise up because that's where they're going to rise up because that's where they see that opportunity as rest, right? You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. So we can be hard on them there. And then again, staying low, staying low, staying low, figure eight, then they shift. All right. Uh, and then 
common mistake, guys, is whenever I, I work with teams and I, I work with players, I always I always tell them do 100% of the drill. So when they when they work through this entire sequence and they finish with that shot, right, that's their opportunity, guys, to bury in, in a game. So they're going to don't let them do all the work here. And then when they get to this position where they're getting the opportunity to actually take a shot, they just kind of flip it on net and then coast back. Right. Again, hold them accountable, make it realistic and then teach them why that's important. Well, if I'm going to do all the work in the game to get to that scoring area, I better score. Right. Um, so moving on to the second station here. And again, I can just very, very, very simple. Right. Um, three pucks set up. I can just snake my way through all three of these pucks so I can make little circles around each individual puck and then snake my way through. Right, come back to this one, full cir circle around, circle around, circle around, snake my way through. And again, finishing with a, with a good, productive, hard shot, trying to put that puck through the net. I actually believe I skipped the slide here, so I'll go back. I don't know, maybe I didn't. Okay, so then again, um, lot station number three here. So very, very, very similar setup. Okay, um, again, the no, number three, just figure eights. Right, so they're gonna, you're going to work on having them work on figure eights across their body, right, sliding their bottom hand, and then just a figure eight in front of their body, body here, and they work all the way down, and they finish with with, with a shot. Um, four station, and again, guys, I know I'm talking through these, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm sorry if it's uh, if it's confusing here, but again, I have notes and all of these, so uh, don't uh, don't fret. Uh, four station here, and again, you can have them go right down the middle of this alley here. And then that's where they're working on sliding their bottom hand. So hands have to be away and they have to reach outside their body and transfer that puck across. And then I always like to throw in devices, right? Where they can open their hips, touch a puck through, open their hips, touch a puck through, open their hips. And then again, finishing with a good shot, having a good habit, playing the game the right way, and then coming back and coming back in line. Okay, so there, there guys, there's just four... Uh, four sample drills that's, uh, that you guys can take to your practices. And, and I, I really hope you guys do them because the kids love it, right? They get lots of reps and uh, it's something that's, uh, well, you'll, you'll really see the benefits of, 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 of players uh, within, those, within those drills. Um, I think that's all I have. I just wanna, I wanna just uh, I'll sh flip my screen here just for a second. Guys, one, I'll give you a little coaching tip here. Um, one of the things that, that I use uh, every single one of my skates are, are uh, ringette rings. Uh, I find that, that they're so easy for me to, me to transfer uh, around. Like, like they're lighter. I can just, you know, I can chuck them on my stick like, like this. And I can bring them around the rink. Um, and then also like they're heavier on the ice. So the players don't knock them around as much and uh, they don't knock them over. Uh, just a really kind of a bit of a, a bit of a cheat there for, for you guys. So. Um, Something that you guys can you guys can take to your own practice this practice as well. Hey, I had a couple of questions come in through text and some other stuff here, but uh, yeah, no problem. What are your thoughts? You know, there's between overhandling the puck and then underhandling, um, and I mean, you see so many different philosophies now within the game. Yeah. I think players need to be able to do both. But um, do you yeah. work on both, and what are your thoughts on? Both? Yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll actually give you guys a, a bit of another demo here. You're making, making me work for this. I like it. Um, but yeah, absolutely, Joel. It's, it's, uh, it's both. It's a really good question. Um, you know, you, you see the best guys in the game. They, you know, they have the ability to, uh, to handle that puck as an overhandle, as, as we say, right? Um, and, it, you know, you, you give them that skill that they can put in their toolbox. But at the higher levels, when the game gets faster, you know, that's the expectation that, that you can handle that puck at that level. And uh, you actually want to be more efficient. So let me just, I'll give you an example. It's a really good question. Um, and it's a, it's a really tough skill that, again, really, really important for guys. So um, i show you here. So again, talking about overhandling a puck, right? Talk about overhandling. I, I, I assume it's, it's, it's here. I'm very comfortable here. Right? As soon as I start to do this, as soon as I start to incorporate more movement with my blade around my puck, my feet usually stop moving. Right, so now again, I lose that opportunity to, to play off the rush. Right, uh, the kind of the exception to the rule is a guy like Dry Saddle. Right, he's so smart, he's so smart with where he's got his angles. Patrick Kane, 
where they can do this but make you look silly. Um, at the next level, underhandling is such a good a good skill as well because I want to be able to keep these things moving and play at pace. Right? We always hear the, 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 the buzzword, I want to play fast, I want to play fast. Well, how do you do that? It's by moving my feet. Right, So I can actually get around better by just spotting that puck. And you'll watch again. I encourage you to watch NHL. Watch how many times guys just touch the puck. Yeah, I'm still handling the puck, but I'm underhandling it. By doing this, right, these things are allowed to move. Right? You want an example. A really good one I always tell players is watch D-men come around the net. When they come around the net and they're moving their feet, they're just tapping that puck ahead of their body and allowing these things to keep moving. Right, which allows separation between uh, between defenders as well. well. I see a lot too with uh, especially younger kids. They become so talented with their puck skills and their they have that yeah. creativity. But I find that uh, too much. They, and then they take their shooting opportunity away or their passing opportunity because they have to adjust because they've overhandled that puck yeah. so much. Right. So. Hundred yeah. percent. I think it's also something that that you can also um, you know reel back a bit. Right, if kids have overhandling, you know the power. The power of video is 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 showed them that, right? Uh, great, great, yeah, really good question. Yeah, another good one is uh, kind of segue. You talked about Dry's idol, uh, and then yeah. when you watch Leo, he's pretty. He's so good at handling the puck all around his body, and then one thing that I notice, he doesn't uh, turn his toes towards the puck. He's able to handle that puck all around his body yeah. any thoughts on that or why he's able to do that so well or yeah watch his watch his hands his hands are away from his body and watch where his vision is All right he's so comfortable making plays on on his backhand because where's his head his head's to the inside of the ice right you know there's it's me and he's so good at it he's honestly in all the video i watch he's he's probably the best at it because he has so much confidence in his backhand because his eyes are to the inside right and his hands are all in it but, but having but by having his hands away from his body and off his hip right he's comfortable handling outside right and then he rotates his head to the inside okay well there's there's uh there's archibald or there's nurse or there's mcdavid i'm gonna move a puck to him right makes sense um, and then again by having your hands away from your body he's already in puck protection mode and he's such a strong guy his, his core is so strong that he can just hold guys off and slip pucks and again, but it's all, it's a combination of having the ability to, 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 to see the inside of the ice and also being comfortable handling the puck outside your body. And again, loose bottom hand, hands away from it, right? Puck protection. And I think that's a good sense for a younger level of coaches, right? Is that, you know, I, I often see players at that young age turning their toes always towards the puck, yeah. but yeah. they have to develop that ability to handle outside, right? So. Yeah, because is you want at the end of the day you want to you want to maintain possession, right? So by by simply handling outside my body and you know being smart with where I'm going to put it, right? Um, I hold on to that puck more, right? I mean I make it harder to 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 be defended. Yeah, and then last one here that you just maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on spotting pucks, and I mean that's something that I've learned from you. But you know where would players spot pucks like did through crossovers to gain speed through lateral yeah. linear crossovers when, when could you talk a little bit about the spotting of pucks yeah and again i i like to say uh say mckinnon is this is the perfect example but but his his combination between his feet and his hands are so good that you know he's able to to, to move up the ice you know using lateral crossovers and also stick handle at the same time which is amazing and it, it's 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 mesmerizing right um Again, uh, by by allowing my 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 brain to focus less on my hands, right? By just spotting a puck into an area, it allows my feet to keep moving. So if I can push a puck into an area and allow my feet to move, well, now I'm playing at pace. Now I'm gaining more ice, right? And and again, it's just it's just coming down to that component of of efficiency, right? The less I actually handle a puck, right? The more I can I can I can move my feet, which now I'm playing playing faster. But where, where I don't want don't want to uh, get the wrong message to you guys is I don't want you guys to focus on, well, I'm just going to teach the kids to underhandle it, right? They, <laughs> the skill of underhandling is a, is a stem of being able to do to, to, to overhandle the puck. If that makes sense. So that, that beginning Patrick Kane, Kane uh, clip where he's handling it so quick, he can just spot the puck because he can has both tools in his toolbox there.
But again, the, the, the biggest thing guys, is just efficiency, you know, allow your brain to focus on your, your, your feet less with your hands, you know, trust your hands. Uh, and it allows you to have more, more, uh, pace as well. That's awesome. That's all that I really had submitted for questions. And I think you covered the ones, uh, Oh, some, yeah. Um, yeah, no, just about recording. I've uh, I've recorded it too, so I will uh, awesome. post that. Yeah, I uh, I encourage if anyone else has any questions, guys, I'm I'm willing to stay on here as long as I can to uh, to answer them. Um, I I really I'll just kind of leave you with, leave you, leave you with a few notes that I've I've kind of learned. Um, you know, going to practices and, and working with coaches is is skill, 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 development, development, development. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, do stations, right? Break, break, a, break a practice down. What do I want to get out of the practice today? How do I get there? Um, you know, maybe have a station for puck handling, station for shooting, you know, two sta stations for, for, for skating and edge work and kind of, kind of a combination drill. But um, again, I love, I love that part to whole design, you know, how, what's my end goal? How do I get there? How do I blend skills? You know, what skills do I need to isolate? And, um, and again, think reps, you know, I hate watching kids stand still. I, I like them. I like them moving. I like them getting as much as they can out of their hour session and, 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 and coach them, right. They, they wouldn't be on the ice if they don't, if they didn't want to be coached, right. They have trust in you. They, um, you know, they want to be vulnerable right? and they want to learn. So, you know, if, if you get outside of your, your, your comfort zone and, and, and hold them to that level of uh, excellence, they're going to, they're going to do the, do the, do the same for you. So, um, coach awesome yeah well if that's it joel if you only got anything else I've, that's Thanks, awesome. Derek. i think Derek squeaked one in here um yeah but he just he, he had a question about multi-puck and he's seen you do some multi-puck stuff and do you why do you do it and um yeah i uh multi-pucks it's 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 usually a progression for me it's um why I do it is I, I like to distract players. I like them to get to focus on, okay, well now I'm handling two, two pucks, right? So you're, so your brain's automatically going to think on, okay, well, how do I handle two pucks? Right. And then as soon as they do that, well, now all their habits go to shit, right? Now they're rising up, you know, now their hands are in tight and everything else kind of gets forgotten. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a really good concept. I like to, I like to incorporate um, three pucks. Again, they, they touch the puck more, right? The three puck work I, I like to do individually stationary uh they, they touch the puck more right and again you're trying to d distract them as well so uh and then again it's just creativity you know allowing them to process it you know how do i handle two pucks where do i have to have my hands you know how do i how do i move forward but handling handle two or three pucks or slip pucks through so um yeah guys it's uh, it's, it's it's great it's a great great question you know trying to trying to trick them and outsmart them is is always uh, is always important too so Another one in here is just, could you just go over quickly the proper hand grip of a stick? Like what you do? Yeah. So, so again, I, great. Yeah. It's a great question. So I, I get that a lot. Um, I'll just kind of show it here. I was taught this at a young age, but it's really important. So if I can kind of back it up, or I don't want to fall down here, but if I take my top hand and I take my elbow and I put it on my top hand and I grip well, in that area, and that's somewhere in that area is just a really good reminder of where I'm going to handle a puck. Right. So that, and then again, that, that, the grip is I want my top hand nice and tight because this creates all my movement. Right. Uh, and then my, my, my bottom hand is nice and nice and loose. Right? It allows me to, to, again, pull that puck in, push that puck out, uh, handle around my body as well. Well, I basically too, like often when a player has their hands close together, they're usually not in their stance. Right. So hundred percent and their legs are straight and then they're off balance. Plus, if I see a player with, with hands like, like, like this, I'll teach my D guys, well, now I'm going to attack their stick right now. Now I, they have no power on their bottom hand and now, uh, you know, most likely a turnover, right? Yeah. So as soon as they, they get their hands too close together, I teach the, the defensive guys I work with. Now, now you're lifting sticks. Now you're hacking sticks because they have nothing to kind of defend that. Right. So, yeah, yeah that's a good question. Again, just rule of thumb, elbow, elbow to your top hand grab. And then in that area is where, where I, you know, usually players are, mo are most com comfortable. Yeah. And uh, one last one from your boy, Otto here. Um, oh, nice. Otto, how's it going, buddy? Um, he just wanted to know maybe some drills with the, uh, that involve compete, but also put an emphasis on stick handling. Yeah. Um, ooh, Otto, stump me on this one. No, I, again, I like to, I like to do a lot of partner work. So 
one thing I'll do is I'll have them handle, I'll have them do any of those, the, the, the players that at the beginning of practice, any of those individual skills, I'll have them go next, with a, next to a partner. So I'll have them go for maybe 30 seconds. And then now I, I say, okay, well, grab, you, you're going to grab one more puck and now you guys are going to play one-on-one -on -one keep away. Right. And then like the loser has, you know, five push-ups or, you know, uh, five sit-ups. And then I go back to, to the skill. Right. So now I can kind of get two, uh, two concepts completed. So now it's compete and skill work. Um, another, another really easy way is, um, is after a drill, you know, finish with a little one-on-one -on -one battle. So maybe, maybe you have a coach or the player that just finished his rep in the corner, but now you got a battle in the corner. And then the person who wins the battle out of the corner gets to take, take the shot. And then you wait for your teammate. Um, yeah, I, that's kind of the first thing that, that comes to my mind. I've seen you do um, I really like where, uh, where you have a stationary exercise and the partner is, you know, just tapping or bumping them from behind. Yeah, from the he's front. pressuring you. Yeah. So yeah. same drills and, that you had, but with. Yeah. And one, and one thing again is I want, I want, you know, put pressure on my hips, right. Making sure I stay low, put pressure on my hands, right. Put pressure on the lower half of my stick. Make sure I have a strong lower half of my stick. Just make, make me uncomfortable. Right when I'm handling that puck is really, and again, I'm ne there's never a sequence when I'm controlled and relaxed like that. I don't want to get out of my comfort zone. So if I'm handling a puck, get me uncomfortable, pop my hips, you know, hit my shoulders, go after my top hand, go after my bottom hand, right? Get get into my space, you know, make me work for my, for my, uh, my skill there. So that's, that's a good it. question, Otto. That's all I got for you. So, but uh, you have anything else to uh, I'll just share my screens. I'll just have my, 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 uh, contact info here, uh, for you guys. So, um, yeah, guys, again, uh, my phone number is this there, uh, again, Joel's going to send out this, this PowerPoint to you guys and my emails there as well. Uh, I guys, I, you know, I really encourage, uh, reaching out to myself if you had anything at all. Um, and I, I, I believe this game's all about, you know, sharing and building a network and, and learning as much as you can and being a sponge daily. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd, I'd love to, to help you wherever I can. And, um, you know, hopefully come out to some practices and work with some, some players here once we get going. Um, I, know, uh, I know, Stephen, too, you've got an open house coming up for FX. Yes. Yeah. On February 9th, guys, if you, on our social media, we have a, our high school, my high school program that I, I'm involved with, with, uh, Warren Sandry at our hockey director at FX is that we're having an open house. So I really encourage um, anyone interested to, to follow along. There's lots of really good information and uh, it's a great, great program that is offered to, uh, to high school um, age players. And, and we're very lucky to have uh, a lot of you know, high quality individuals in, in, uh, in, a, in our school environment and as well um, on the ice with, with our athletes and in the gym. So it's a little different than the typical skills program that you see or yeah yeah well, yeah I'll, I'll touch in a bit it's it's with uh, uh dan cordick and joel joel ennis is also involved as well and uh we have simon bennett uh down at, at archetype as well and uh you know it's it's, it's our high performance program so we're, we're building a um you know a high a high-end academy with you know the best players and the best people and that we can you know put together uh daily so um yeah, I, I really encourage you guys to, to check it out on, on, on our social media outlets. So that's uh, St. FX Hockey and also St. FX Hockey uh, HP as well. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for doing this. Yeah. Um, I've recorded it right, and uh, we, will, uh, we can post that as well too. And uh, again, if anybody has any questions, they can submit them to me or to Stephen Direct and we'll hook that up. But uh, that was awesome. I really appreciate that and sharing that knowledge and yeah. uh, have a good yeah, guys. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. I I, I really appreciate it. I, uh, you know, it means a lot for you guys to, to, to sit here and, and listen to me talk. And, you know, it's, it's really humbling as well. And I know I'm really proud to be able to, to, to speak to you guys. So if you guys need anything ever, please, please don't hesitate to, to reach out or, or go, go through Joel as well. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.